Welcome everyone, Questine here with a guide for the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt regarding the mouse and keyboard controls for the game. Now this is being recorded on PC, but people can play with mouse and keyboard on a console as well. Now, generally the response you're going to hear from a lot of people uh, when it comes to decisions between mouse and keyboard versus controller, a lot of people say, oh, it's better with the controller. I fundamentally disagree, just as I disagree with the, on Dark Souls and God of War and Jedi Fallen Order. See, there are several advantages. In The Witcher 3, these advantages are as follows. First off, camera control. The mouse is significantly better when it comes to camera control than any controller on the planet. I don't care what controller you're using, I don't care how much you, be atta uh, you are attached to it, you will have much better camera control, being able to uh, uh, be aware of your surroundings with a mouse and keyboard. It's faster, it's more precise, especially on a pretty good mouse. Then, secondly, movement. Now, when it comes to movement, people say, oh, WSND is not as accurate as a controller. To which I reply, yeah, but you don't use WSND to move, you just use W to move forward, and then you move the mouse in which direction you want to go into, and then you move there, or you sprint in this particular case. And finally, there's also directional attack. So the way Geralt attacks in The Witcher 3 is dependent on where you're pointing. I prefer not to use a lock-on unless I'm fighting human opponents and I want to parry them, but with monsters in particular, and when I want precision and I want fast attacks, I don't lock on. Instead, I use the mouse to have a great deal of camera control, and wherever I'm pointing, I will attack. That's how it works in the game. Where you're pointing, you don't have to hold anything down on your keyboard, you just uh, move your mouse, your camera with your mouse, and wherever you're pointing, Geralt will attack. Now, there are some downsides with this, it can be a bit... Imprecise in, imprecise in certain situations where enemies can get very uh, uh, very powerful block attacks and you can't hit them. Uh, but for the most part, being able to attack like this is uh, an incredible uh, strength. So those are the advantages. They're the key advantages uh, when it comes to mouse and keyboard ver uh, versus PC. I've played this game with mouse and keyboard. I've played Witcher 1, 2, 3 with mouse and keyboard. I've played Dark Souls, Elden Ring. All of those games, I finished all of those games. I've done God of War on the highest difficulty, Jedi Fallen Order on the highest difficulty. Yeah, there is no inherent advantage to a controller to mouse and keyboard. And in fact, there are some very significant advantages that I touched on for mouse and keyboard. But here's the thing about The Witcher 3. The default setup for mouse and keyboard is pretty awful. So you want to fix that, and I'll show you how. First off, you want to go in the gameplay settings. Not sure if this is going to be available, how much, how many of these options are going to be available on a console, but for PC, here's what you want to do at the very least. Go over here and toggle manual sword drawing and sheaving. The reason you want to do this is because Geralt otherwise will, uh, will sheave and unsheave his sword at the worst possible uh, moments. He'll sheave his sword in particular when he thinks that he's safe, but he may not be safe and it just creates a great deal of frustration. So enable that. Now I'm not quite sure what movement response uh, does, but by default the game is going to be set to alternative. I hear that it's better but I would, um, uh, but I don't quite know what to make of it, honestly. I personally haven't really noticed much of a difference, if I'm being honest. Now, what about alternative uh, sign casting? What does uh, or quick sign casting? What does this mean? Well, by default, you have keybinds to select your signs, or you can scroll with the mouse wheel by default. But with the binds, uh, if you set them up. What uh, what clicking these binds will do will just select the sign. If you enable quick sign casting, um, if you enable quick sign casting, what this will do is when you're placing six, you're not selecting Quen, you're quest casting Quen. So that's a great uh, that's far better precision when it comes to getting your signs off in combat. Now there's a dedicated key by default to cast a sign. You may not need that, though you can still use it um, and it might be useful. On top of that, set all your cameras. They might be 
set to close by default, set all your cameras to default. This will increase the distance of the camera and yeah, give you a lot more awareness in combat and in exploration. So those are uh, the important things to set over here. Um, I would not recommend, by the way, playing with enemy upscaling. I personally detest it. Um, let's uh, set the Gwent difficulty level to hard, by the way. Now, um, that's part of it, but let's talk about keybinds. The keybinds are set up by default. I've pressed the button again. They're the default keybinds. They're a mess. One of the biggest issues that you can see right off the bat is what you see over here. So fast attack is a left mouse button, okay. But then you get this weird modify attack type button and strong attack is set to nothing. And instead witcher senses are set to right mouse button and parry counter attack. I could maybe see the argument of parry counter attack, but the problem is by default, if you want to do a strong attack, you have to hold, uh, you have to hold shift and then uh, click the left mouse button. Some would argue that it, uh, there might be some benefits with that, but you're going to put a lot of pressure on your uh, pinky because that's what you're going to hold uh, shift on. Uh, one critical aspect when you're playing with mouse and keyboard, one thing I'd recommend is you want to use all your fingers, right? So uh, you're using your little finger to hold down shift. A lot of pressure, I know. I've had that issue myself before in other games, God of War. Uh, Dark Souls. If there's any issue issues that I've encountered that is just like when I'm blocking a lot or parrying a lot, I do end up tiring my, fin my that finger out quite a bit. But that's uh, so we want to avoid that. If you use this by default, you're gonna tire your finger out. So I am going to change a bunch of things over here. It's really bad to not have strong attack on its own dedicated button. At least we have the option would be even worse if we didn't have the option. So sprint, uh, toggle, walk and run, that's fine, but we could also use toggle sprint. Why would we want to use toggle sprint? Well, because of the same thing. We would tire our fingers out when we're exploring and we want to sprint because Geralt doesn't uh, lose stamina. So you can sprint while exploring and get faster to a location, but we want a toggle for that. The one I'm going to recommend might seem a bit unconventional, but it's certainly a good one caps lock you're just gonna press it and you're just gonna run when you press it you could also use a toggle for sprint in general as a left shift but i would recommend having a dedicated a sprinting button all the same because you're gonna be able to sprint in fights as well you're gonna use your stamina if you sprint in fights but sometimes you just want to escape a, a bad situation all right lock on target set to z Set it to the middle mouse button. I'm not sure how many people don't have a middle mouse button in this day and age. And they do have other keybinds set for a middle mouse button. So it's, it's a bit weird to not have that. So lock on target. Um, when it comes to lock on target, I would predominantly use it for humans, not monsters. If you're using it for monsters as opposed to just attacking freely because monsters can be so fast and so can beasts that uh, locking onto a target may result in a lot of missed opportunities. Just be aware of that situation. Um, what about uh, interaction? Well, it's a good bind by default, but I'm going, but E is a good bind because uh, it's very easy to access. Like you, you keep your middle finger on W and you have a lot of movement because of the mouse. So E is a very good bind. It's wasted on interaction. So I'm gonna move that to R. Um, R because I want to use E for something else. Now for modify attack type, I'm just going to remove it altogether because I don't want it in combat to interfere with sprinting because it likely would. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove it by uh, moving uh, sprint to a left mouse button, making sure that sprint, okay. And that's that's how you uh, remove it over there. Okay, strong attack, right mouse button. What about Witcher senses and parry counter attack? Well, what uh, Witcher senses? There are a number of binds you can use. What I'm going to use for uh, Witcher uh, senses is going to be Q. What about the cast sign? You could leave it empty because since you've enabled uh, fast cast signs, you don't need it. It's more precise to cast signs using this than 
uh, uh, it's it's more precise to cast the sign that you want just by uh, setting key binds for those signs and enabling in the gameplay, enabling quick uh, sign casting. That's my perspective. So personally, I would uh, turn it off, but you can use Z for it uh, if you want to. So I'm gonna leave it off myself. Um, you could also remove uh, the toggle between signs if you so desire. What about use quick access item? You could use X or you could use Z. I'm going to use uh, Z personally, or rather I'm gonna use X, um, X over here. Uh, and actually, uh, now that I think about it a bit, I think uh, keeping a cast sign button on Z can be a better situation because most of the time the sign I'm casting is quite right because it just absorbs that one hit. Uh, and Z is a very convenient bind because when you're casting a sign, you're not going to roll like you're using your thumb to press Z. You shouldn't use any other thing. You should use your thumb. Um, and also with quick access item, it might seem like there's a lot of things you're going to be doing to your thumb, but when you're using an item or you're using a sign or you're dodging or rolling, you're not doing something else in that moment. When you're casting a sign, you're not going to roll in that exact moment, so you have certainly the space. What about call horse, gallop canter? Well, gallop canter is easily solvable. Just press, just use left shift. It doesn't interfere with this, so you can use the left shift for both of them. Makes sense. What about uh, galloping? Uh, encountering uh, and dismounting. Well, with dismount, use R. Again, it doesn't interfere because interact would only work when you're dismounted, so you can use dismount. And call to horse, tilde. I mean, you're not going to constantly cast it. It's readily available. You can use it pretty easily, uh, and it's not used for anything else. Stop horse, not important uh, as I see it. Surface and dive pretty fine. Quick access menu, okay. What about consumables? Well, I would argue F1, F2, F3, and F4. Reasonably easy to access. And besides, when it comes to consumables, you're not just going to constantly spam consumables because those are your potions. If you do that, you're just going to end up dead because of an intoxication. Uh, drawing your sword, uh, steel sword and silver sword. One and two are good keybinds. They're wasted for swords. I, what I would do is the side mouse button, uh, mice button. If you don't have side mouse buttons, you can use things like F, you could even you know, use uh, things like Z and all that. You have some binds available, but this, these are things you should bind and should be reasonably accessible, but they're not the most important. So I use personally the side mouse button. Most people should have at least two side mouse but uh, mice buttons. Um, remember when the same key bind that's drawing the sword is also sheaving that particular sword. So. Here I'm drawing my steel sword, then the same bind, um, or no, that's the silver sword. Um, this is the steel sword, and the same bind is going to sheave it. Okay, remember to sheave it when it comes to the guards. And that leaves just the signs. Now, you can set these binds to whatever you want. From my perspective, um, when it comes to one to five, uh, one to ten, the most convenient ones are one to five. Anything beyond five is just a bit hard to hit with uh, with your finger. So, um, I would set ARD to one. Now, one is actually a bit inconvenient in its own right, or is not as convenient as two and three. Two and three are the most convenient buttons to actually hit on your keyboard because you just you know you move your middle finger easily enough. So I would put Quen on two, I would put Igni on three, and that leaves Yirden and Axie. Put, um, I put the Axie on four, that's a personal choice, because I find it easier to hit five, uh, to hit five. So if I want to get an Yirden, and there are certainly boss fights where you are going to cast, um, where you're going to cast, uh, Yurden in particular. There's also fights where you want to use Igni, right? And sometimes when you want to use Art, but the Art is not as used, at least in my experience, when it comes down, uh, when it comes down to it. So yeah, setting up Quen to two and Igni to three uh, works the best. Obviously, you can also use Z uh, if you're just chain uh, chain casting, right? You just select Quen with two once, and then you can just chain cast it with Z. And those would be the binds I would personally use uh, over here. Um, the one thing I forgot to mention is parry counterattack. 
you are going to parry against certain human opponents, in particular those that have shield. Uh, this is what I've saved E for, because you won't do this every time. You'll only do it against human opponents. Maybe some monsters, but typically you don't want to use it on monsters. Um, I can't demonstrate it here because I'd have to be in a fight with a human opponent to demonstrate it. Uh, but E is certainly a, a, an available enough bind, and so it, uh, and and it's also going to work pretty decently well for counterattacking as well. Those are, are the binds I would recommend uh, to use over here. Quest signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and I'll see you boys and girls next time.